going to go over a bit more math with you today. Uh, now we are looking at uh, Savas and Vision Math 2.0, third grade curriculum, still in the first book, last unit. Uh, we are now on 7.4. And this area, this section, focuses, we're still looking at bar graphs, but this one uh, is one that we're going to go a little further into them. We're looking at solving problems using bar graphs. So really, we're going to be looking at some word problems here. And I know these are not... These are not everyone's favorite, but they are important to understand. And this also really emphasizes what I've been trying to drive home to you guys, uh, which is that you need to be reading instructions. So you need to be reading instructions and reading these problems very, very carefully. OK, so I want you to always look at the entire page, look at everything you see here. Um, this is the graph itself right here. So it's a lot of important information. There's important information here. This one right here, the problem has a hidden question. Remember hidden questions, guys. Remember what that means? That means that there's a question. There's something you need to solve here that it is not asking you outright. Okay, so it means that the question is hidden. It's something that you still need to figure out to make this work, but it doesn't necessarily say what it is. This is on page 378, by the way. We're going to do page 378 and 379, the guided and independent practice. We need 378 to help us with the problems over here on 379. So let's go ahead and start here. Now it says Angela wants Carly and Monique to have a total of 60 paper cranes. The bar graph shows how many paper cranes her friends have already. Uh, I'll, excuse me. How many paper cranes her friends already have. How many more paper cranes does Angela need to make for Carly and Monique to have 60 cranes in all? So here we go. Now, remember, I always say this, underline, circle, highlight, whatever you need to do. Get that important information into your head. We have 60 paper cranes, okay? She wants Carly to have, Carly and Monique to have a total of 60 paper cranes. Now, because we know Angela wants this, it means they do not have that total yet, okay? So that's an important piece of information. Another hint is in the actual question down here where it says, how many more, how many more paper cranes does Angela need to make Carly and Monique have 60 paper cranes in all? This means that we are missing some information. This is where your hidden question comes in because we don't actually know. Right. So we have a couple things. We don't actually even know how many cranes they have right now. We know that she wants Angela wants Carly and Monique to have 60 paper cranes. But how many paper cranes do Carly and Monique have now? That's something we need to figure out. So the first thing is, and it says right here, solve the hidden question. How many paper cranes do Carly and Monique already have? That's your hidden question. Remember, you still need to answer the main question as well, so don't forget that. We have multiple steps here. The first one, use the scale to find out how many paper cranes Carly and Monique each have, then add. Now, our scale again here, it's on the left-hand side. We are counting by 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, okay? And we've got Ilana, Elspeth, Carly, and Monique's information here. But all we're really concerned about is how many Carly and Monique have. If you take a look here, you can tell that Carly... Uh, that Monique has 10, and Carly has 30. Okay, so Carly has 30, Monique has 10. We're adding those together, and we're going to end up with 40. So right now, that means that they already have 40, okay? Now, let's look at that main question again. How many more paper cranes does Angela need to make for Carly and Monique to have 60 paper cranes in all? Well, we know that we want 60. That's our goal, right? We have 40. So you're going to take 60 minus 40. This is subtraction, okay? And it says right here, we're breaking it apart. This is subtraction. And our total is 20. Your complete sentence is, Angela needs to make 20 paper cranes. You could also say, Angela needs to make 20 more paper cranes to get to 60. There are a number of different ways you can answer this. But your answer is 20 paper cranes. And we did that with the information here on the graph. Now, with this bar graph, did we use everything that we saw in here? No, we didn't. We didn't use all the data, but that's okay. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you're looking for very specific information, and that's what we had here. Now, let's take a look over here. Look at the graph on page 378. That's over here. 
explain. Remember, explain means you're going to be writing. And once again, if you're writing and you're going to write a complete sentence here, I want to see you use caps. Caps again is capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling. That's our acronym. So I want a good complete sentence. Explain whether you would add, subtract, multiply, or divide to find out how many more paper cranes Carly already has than Monique. Okay. So here's the question. The question then is, well, what are we trying to find out? Well, we're trying to find out how many more paper cranes Carly already has, already has, than Monique. Again, keywords, more than. So we're trying to figure this out. So let's see what they have again. We saw that Carly has 30. So Carly has 30 and Monique has 10. Okay. Well, in this case, then, because we're looking for more than, and we're trying to figure out how many more, we're going to do subtraction. 30 minus 10 is 20. Okay? So now we've got part of this answer here. The Part of the answer is we now know that uh, how, how many more paper cranes Carly already has than Monique. Well, Carly has 20 more paper cranes than Monique. So you're going to explain right here that you needed to subtract, okay? And I want you to write a complete sentence here, a complete sentence that explains that you needed to subtract to find out how many more paper cranes Carly has than Monique, okay? So that's what you're going to do in this section right here. How does a bar graph help you compare data? Once again. This is another written answer. I want to see a complete sentence. How does a bar graph help you compare data? Well, there are a lot of different ways you can look at this, right? There are a few, right? It helps you compare data by giving you a visual, look over at it again, a visual representation of the data. That's one way. So then you could actually look at how, you could even look at just how long this is. You can tell just by looking at it that Carly has the most, right? And you can tell by looking at it that Monique has the least. So that's another way you're looking at it. You're looking at it visually. Another way is you, you actually look at the scale, right? The scale gives you the actual data. It's not just the pictures that are important. The scale gives you the actual data. So another way that the bar graph helps you is by taking that data, making it visual, right? And giving you a scale that you can use to help you figure out exactly what you are comparing exactly what each one of these people each one of the girls here on the uh the list how many paper cranes they have so you have a couple different ways you can answer that one i just want to again make sure that you use a complete sentence to answer something like that okay so um in this case what i would write there would be a bar graph helps me Compare, that's a no. Again, apologize for the handwriting. Compare data by giving me a visual representation. That's my answer for that one. Okay, I want you to put that in your own words as well. If we were doing this in class, that'd be something that we would do together in the guided practice section. But if you're seeing this on the page in front of you and we are not doing it together, uh, then I want you to practice these by writing these down yourself. Okay, now let's take a look over here. Use the bar graph. Now, here's our bar graph. We're looking at the bicycle club miles. Let's look at that scale first. Always look at the scale. We are using tens, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. Now let's also figure out how many uh, each one of these people rode, the, how many miles. Victor is at the 20, okay, so he's got 20. Let's go ahead and write that on there. Rosita, uh, she's in between, but because we're, we're counting by tens, we know that if you, if you were to jump between 30 and 40, you're going to end up at 35. So Rosita is at 35. Gary looks to be exactly at 30, and Hal is at 20. Now, the next question. Now that we know these, we've already figured it out. How many more miles did Hal and Victor ride than Rosita? 
Again, more than. You see that? That means we are going to be using subtraction to figure out this problem. But there's kind of a hidden question here because they're not just asking how many more miles Hal rode or Victor. We're looking at how many more miles did Hal and Victor ride than Rosita. So Hal and Victor. So the hidden question is, well, how many miles did Hal and Victor ride? We actually need to look at both of those. So Hal had 20 miles under his belt. Victor also has 20. So 20 plus 20 is 40. Well, how many miles did Rosita ride? 35. Rosita's at 35. So it's asking, how many more miles did Hal and Victor ride than Rosita? Well, that means you're going to take 40, because that's the, the sum of Hal and Victor's miles together, and subtract Rosita's. Rosita at 35. I'm going to borrow from that 3, make that a 10. That will give us 5, because 10 minus 5 is 5, and 3 minus 3 is 0, so your answer is 5. That means that Hal and Victor rode 5 more miles than Rosita. Okay? And we got that all from this, this bar graph right here. Let's take a look at this one down here. This is the picture graph. Now... Again, because this section, 7-4, and you'll see this when you move into the homework and practice section, this isn't just about bar graphs. It's also about picture graphs, and they are very similar. However, you have to remember, and let's go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger so we can, uh, we can focus on it a little bit better. Remember that when you're looking at a picture graph, the most important thing you need to look at first is the key down here. We need to know what all these symbols mean. In this case, the symbols are t-shirts. And one t-shirt equals 10 t-shirts. A half t-shirt equals five t-shirts. So let's look at the numbers. Let's break it down. Jazzies, blue t-shirts, 10, 20, 5. That's 25. Red t-shirts, 10, 20. That's 20. And green t-shirts, only five. Ultimate, ultimate tees. Uh, let's see, they've got one t-shirt here, so there's 10 blue. Uh, looks like we have 25 red and 30 green. I'm just writing this in because it's helpful when you come back to answering these questions over here, okay? How many more red t-shirts were sold at Ultimate Tee than at Jazzy's? How many more red? Well, let's look at the total. So Ultimate Tee had 25 red, 25 red, and Jazzy's had 20 red. Well, once again, again, we are looking at, and that was kind of redundant. That means I, I repeated myself. Once again, we are looking at our keywords here. More than. How many more red t-shirts were sold at Ultimate Tee than at Jazzy? So we're going to subtract. And our answer is five. There were five more t-shirt, more red t-shirts sold at Ultimate Tees than at Jazzy's. Now let's look over here. How many fewer green t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's than at Ultimate Tees? Look at those keywords again. Fewer means less. Fewer means less. Fewer than. We're comparing again. How many fewer green t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's than Ultimate Tees? Well, ultimately, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use subtraction again, right? We're going to look at Ultimate Tees first, though, because the implication here, what we're inferring, is that Ultimate Tees sold more green t-shirts because it says how many fewer green t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's than at Ultimate Tees. So Ultimate Tee sold 30 green t-shirts. And Jazzy's only sold five. So we're going to subtract again. And we're going to borrow. Ten minus five, remember, is five. And this time we still have a two left over. So our answer over here is 25. 25. There were 25 fewer green t-shirts sold at Jazzy's than at Ultimate Tees. Remember also, again, my rule here. And if you are not one of my students and your teacher tells you something different, then that's okay. But my rule is that when there, when we have word problems, you're going to write a complete sentence. So don't follow my lead here. These are the answers, but I want you to write the sentence. I want you to say there were 25 fewer green t-shirts sold at Jazzy's than at Ultimate Tees. 
put it in your words, but make it a complete sentence. And again, remember caps, capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling. Now, last one. How many more blue and red t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's than green t-shirts were sold at Ultimate Tea? We have a couple important pieces to look at here. Again, we're looking at how many more than. And we're looking at blue and red. Make sure you read the whole thing, blue and red. So now we've got a hidden question. We need to figure out how many blue and red t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's. We have to put those together. So there were 25 blue, 25 blue at Jazzy's, and 20 red. Add those together. You end up with 45 blue and red. Now, green t-shirts at Ultimates. We had 30 green t-shirts at Ultimates. So now, now we know what the blue and red numbers are combined. We have the sum of the, the blue and red t-shirts at Jazzy's. And we have the green t-shirts at Ultimate Tees. Now it says how many more blue and red t-shirts were sold at Jazzy's than green t-shirts were sold at Ultimate Tees. So we have more and then. Okay, that means we are going to take the 45. We are going to subtract 30, which is going to give us 15. That means our answer over here is there were 15 more blue and red t-shirts sold at Jazzy's than green green t-shirts were sold at ultimate tees again we used our picture graph over there to get all of that information which we would not have been able to do if we hadn't read the entire thing carefully right we need to make sure we are always reading these problems carefully making sure there are not any hidden questions and if there are you make sure you answer those first but when you look at these graphs picture graph look at the key first always look at the key make sure you understand the symbols don't ever assume that you know what they are unless you've looked at it first. With the bar graphs, make sure you look at the scale. Don't assume that you know what it is because sometimes it's different. Sometimes they'll count by ones, twos, fives, tens. You'll see a number of different things there, okay? Okay, so uh, go ahead and get started on that work. If you have questions, let me know. And uh, I will be back with another video for our next lesson. Until then, I will. See you guys later.